The year 208 AD was a very special year in the history of the Three Kingdoms. In this year, Cao Cao returned from his victory against the Wu Huan, and northern China was once again unified. It was the same year that Zhu Ge Liang and Sima Yi both appeared on the scene, and it was the same year that the northern bank of the Red Cliff was colored red with fire. By the beginning of 208 AD, Cao Cao had occupied Jizhou, Qingzhou, Yanzhou, Xuzhou, Yuzhou, Suzhou, most of Yuzhou except Liao Dong, and a small part of Bingzhou. In addition Nanyang in Jingzhou and Jiujiang in Yangzhou were also under the control of Cao Cao. Of the remaining territories, Liao Dong was the independent kingdom of Gongsun Kang, Hanzhong Commandery in Yizhou belonged to Zhang Lu, and Jiao Zhou had long since belonged to Su Xie. At the end of the Han Dynasty, Jiao Zhou was in a chaotic situation with frequent civil unrest. At that time, Emperor Ling appointed Xu Xie, a member of a large local family, to be the governor of Jiao Zhou, in the hope of stabilizing the situation in the province of Jiao Zhou with the help of the Xu clan's influence. Soon Xu Xie had actual control of the six commanderies of Jiao Zhou except for Song Wu Commandery. At that time, there were seven commanderies in Jiao Zhou, among which Song Wu belonged to Liu Biao's territory, and Wu Ju, the governor of Song Wu, was originally Liu Biao's general, and was sent by Liu Biao to Song Wu to station his troops there. For the remaining six commanderies, the governor of Jiao Zhu was held by Xu Xie himself, the governor of Herpu, Jiu Zhen, and Nanhai were all held by Xu Xie's younger brothers, and the governors of Yulin, and Renan were all close associates of Xu Xie. From then on, no matter who was sent by the court to be the governor of Jiao Zhou, he could not actually control the area. Cao Cao then ordered Xu Xie to govern Jiao Zhou, in the name of the emperor, and Xu Xie officially became a warlord in southern China. The northwestern Liangzhou at this time was still in chaos, just large and small independent armed forces have more than a dozen, among them Tama Tang and Han Sui's forces are the strongest, but both nominally expressed submission. Cao Cao then sent Zhang Ji to persuade Ma Tang to give up his troops and join the court as an official, although Ma Tang agreed verbally, he was still hesitant to do so. Zhang Ji, on the one hand, ordered all the counties in Guangzhou to intensify the storage of military food in preparation for the war, on the other hand, he made the important officials in the neighborhood go out of the city and greet him in a parade, making the scene very grand. Ma Tang was just one of the more powerful warlords in Liangzhou, a leader, with no direct affiliation to other factions. Zhang Ji made such a mess, spreading the news that Ma Tang wanted to join the court as an official to everyone. Ma Tang couldn't stay in Liangzhou any longer, so he took his family to Ye Chen. However, Ma Tang's forces were not disbanded, and with Ma Chao's formidable personal abilities and bright battle successes, he had actually gained widespread support from Ma Tang's old troops. Cao Cao then appointed Ma Chao as a lieutenant general, and made him a marquis of Du Ting village, which was tantamount to acknowledging this established fact. The veteran rebel expert Han Sui, on the other hand, said he would wait and see for a few more years before saying anything, and sent only a son and his son-in-law's parents into the court as hostages, thus allowing Liang Zhou to continue to maintain its fragile peace. Most of the remaining three provinces, Yangzhou, Jingzhou and Yizhou, were controlled by Sun Chuan, Liu Biao and Liu Zhang respectively. So destroying these three forces and conquering the South in one stroke turned out to be Cao Cao's next goal in life. In June 208 AD, Cao Cao abolished all the three counselors, Chancellor of Masses, Chancellor of Constructions and Chancellor of Wars and he reinstated the position of the Prime Minister, which had been abandoned for more than 200 years, and Cao Cao appointed himself Prime Minister, assuming sole control of the court's political power. A month later, Liu Biao, the 67-year-old governor of Jingzhou, fell critically ill. 
When the news reached Ye Chang, Cao Cao quickly gathered his troops and marched south. With an old grudge against his old friend Liu Bei, and the desire for the land of Jingzhou, he charged straight for Xiangyang. Liu Bei may not have changed much in Cao Cao's eyes at this time, except that he's a little heavier, and there's a 27-year-old young man next to him. That's the military advisor Liu Bei had previously visited, three times before he was able to bring in. In Longzhong a few months ago, during the cold winter, a sleeping dragon gave Liu Bei, a depressed, hidden dragon, a magnificent strategic blueprint. The short summary is that Cao Cao is powerful and should not be fought hard. Jiang Dong is stable and can be united. Jingzhou, with its excellent land and water transport, should be occupied first. Yizhou is rich in materials and has a large population, so it can be plotted later. At that time hold the dangerous passes and pacify the minorities in the west and south. Unite with Sun Chuan externally and develop the economy internally. Once a great event occurs in the world, Liu Bei will send a great general to lead the troops of Jingzhou northward to the central plains. Liu Bei, on the other hand, will personally lead the troops of Yi Zhou westward out of Qin Chuan, and by then the great cause can be accomplished. This young man, not only rely on their own situation in the world, unique insight and analysis to guide the direction of the struggle for the confused Liu Bei, but also with his own influence. Let Liu Bei and his representative of the military group to complete a crucial metamorphosis and sublimation. From then on Liu Bei had a clear goal and became lucky. From then on his side is no longer only a group of warriors and fellow townsmen, but more such as Pang Tong, Ma Liang, Shi Zhen, and other faces of a scholarly talent. From then on, he no longer often lament the waste of time, the fat on the thigh resurfaced. Since then, history has been rewritten, added with so much praise, so much poignant, so much blood and loyalty, so much exciting moments. A remarkable war and an equally extraordinary era are upon us.